Hello and welcome to From No Crypto to No Crypto. This is Blockchain Wayne with another cryptocurrency podcast. Today's episode brought to us by CoinCierge Club, mobile private key wallet, and point of sale solution. Today's episode is also brought to us by the Cryptocurrent Conference being held in New Orleans March 15th. Yes, that is this week, March 15th, Cryptocurrent Conference. Uh, you can get tickets at www.crypto-currentconf.co. Uh, use the discount code I will put in the description of this podcast that you can use to save some money on the ticket being held in New Orleans this week. So get out there and see what's going on. All right, today we've got a special guest interview. I've got Mr. Jacob Lill here. And just to tell you a little about Jacob, I uh, met J Jacob working with a crypto company out of Las Vegas. Uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob has got his hands in a lot of, of really cool projects, a lot of things going on in the, in the cryptocurrency space. So not necessarily representing any one company today, but just kind of to talk about in, you know his experience in crypto, what he's done, uh, and just kind of get his insight and viewpoint to kind of educate people on what they need to know, what they need to be looking for. Uh, when they're looking at cryptocurrency, looking at projects. So, Jacob, I want to thank you for joining us today. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you for having me on, Wayne. Uh, excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, like I mentioned, man, there's, there's so much going on, and you are uh, you definitely uh, are running, I guess, about 200, 300 miles an hour here. So, uh, hey, you know, what, can you tell us, <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell us about your background, like kind of, what led you to where you are today in, in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space? Um, just give us a little bit of that background. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, my entire life I've been an entrepreneur. Um, I, I've always really specialized in new and emerging markets, new and emerging industries. Um, I did a lot of stuff in the, the medical space, um, ha had a great time doing that. Um, more recently, I did some stuff with alternative real estate and alternative travel, um, specializing in Airbnbs and VRBOs all over the place. Then probably, well, let, let me rewind a little bit. I got introduced into cryptocurrencies, I don't know, probably back 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. Um, I got involved as an investor initially. and. As soon as I did, I, I saw something special. What it was, I wasn't quite sure at the time, but it was enough to push me down that rabbit hole and I just started reading and researching and listening to podcasts and watching videos and reading white papers and just really trying to figure out what this blockchain industry is and what it's here to do. Um, fast forward a year or two, I had gotten so excited about the industry, about the space, and about the, the potential for the good it could create for the world, I decided to go at it full force. Um, I, I stepped away and exited a company that I had built up years before, and I, I started working with a, a good friend of mine, Daryl, uh, with Coincierge, um, which, amazing company, amazing product, uh, essentially three major things. It's a private key wallet, which allows you to host an unbelievable number of different cryptocurrencies. There's Coincierge Pro, which is a point of sale system that allows brick and mortar and digital merchants to accept cryptocurrencies for their goods and services. Um, and, you know, I started working with, with Coincierge and really diving right into the space and meeting some incredible people and, and uh, finding out everything that, that was being done and everything people were doing together to, to move the space forward. Um, so since then, um, I've just invested 100% of my time and, and resources into the space and learned as much as I could and started developing a lot of different projects with some, some great organizations and great people and you know really just getting out there and trying to to spread the word teach as many people as i can and um be a resource to the the community in any way that i can be all right awesome nice nice so um so what, what would you tell someone today someone's looking at cryptocurrency for the first time and they're just somebody's told them about this hey there's this digital currency it's going to be big or whatever the case may be what um, what do you find is the best route for someone just to really start to dabble and, and get involved? 
Well, you know, I think when you're in that beginning phase of just getting interested in cryptos or just getting interested in blockchain, I think you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. And the second question you might not be able to answer unless you dive a little bit deeper. So one, is this purely a, a financial investment? Am I purely just trying to see profits? And is that why I'm in this? If that's the case, fine, that's great. That's the initial reason I got into cryptos. But in order to be the most responsible investor, if question one is yes, um, I think it's really important to research the projects, to research the technology and to figure out exactly what blockchain is, exactly what its purpose is, and what problems or opportunities these companies see and what they're doing to um, mobilize those opportunities in the best ways possible. Um, and you know, the funny thing about cryptocurrencies is I think a lot of people initially get in it for the money because the education isn't out there. They don't understand the big picture of what blockchain means for us. And I think they see high returns, they see their, their investment go up three, 400%, and you can't help but to get very interested. You can't help but to ask those, well, why is this going through the roof so quick questions? And really dive in, and I think in researching and learning about what blockchain is, what it does, how it works, and what these projects are really all about, you start asking yourself a second question, which is, okay, so sure, I wanna make, make some gains off of these investments, but are there additional purposes to investing in some of these companies rather than seeing an immediate profit? And my answer to that and my, my outlook on that is yes. You know, a lot of these companies have big dreams and brilliant ideas and, in many cases, the technology to actually make these things feasible and make them a reality. However, these aren't overnight success stories in a lot of cases. This is what we call mass adoption and it, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen over the course of a few years. This is a very big long-term play to, in my opinion, make the world a better place for every single one of us. And, you know, part of that is seeing the return on your investment, not only in our traditional profit sense, but in infrastructure that's able to be built, ideas that are able to be nourished, teams that are able to be built, and the spreading of knowledge, uh, of knowledge that is allowed to take place because of some of those investments. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, great point. So. Uh, I know you and I talked a little bit offline before uh, recording this podcast and you've got some projects you're working on, uh, some that you can't quite talk about yet. We'll have to schedule a follow up with those later. But um, what are some things that you're working on that you can tell us that, that really excite you and, and, and what's going on with it? Yeah. So, you know, um, I, I'm super lucky to where I get to work with some amazing people on some amazing different projects in many different capacities. and. I guess I was actually thinking about this and having a conversation with a friend of mine a few days ago. And I think there's similarities in between all the different projects I'm working in. Um, although they're in different industries, they're, they're completely different concepts and technologies, they have one thing in common. And what they are is they're addressing today's problems and today's inefficiencies and they're using blockchain technologies, and in some cases, cryptocurrencies, as a tool to address those problems, but that's not purely their focus. The, their focus is in the value that they're creating for the end users, for the consumers, and blockchain and cryptocurrencies are just kind of in the background of these because it's a, a revolutionary technology that makes things possible that simply were not possible before. But that's not the vocal point. The vocal point is the benefit for people right now. Um, so, you know, I'm working on a project right now within the, the real estate space that integrates cryptocurrencies purely as just a vehicle to move funds from person A to person B. It works seamlessly, it works in the background, although the users do have access 
to their private keys, um, they don't have to know a thing about crypto for it to work instantly, immediately, and very, very fluidly. Um, and then there's the whole aspect of, of storing data on a blockchain and, and decentralizing information that, that traditionally has been centrally handled by a company or a brand or an organization. Now, what I'll tell you is we're integrating blockchain into every single one of these companies to store information. Uh, in some cases, it's a private blockchain in the beginning. In other cases, it's a public blockchain. But we're only doing these things when they make sense. Um, but at the same time, we're also doing it with the understanding that we might not have everything figured out today. And a year from now, there might be some revolutionary change in a blockchain protocol that makes something possible that wasn't today possible then. And we want to prepare ourselves and standardize, standardize our data handling processes and procedures to best set ourselves up for success when something changes uh, due to somebody else creating something or when we release something that changes the game forever. Nice, nice. You know, you said a couple of things there that I kind of took notice of that I, I feel as well and I tell people. Um, the easy and seamless part is something that, that I say all the time, like we're going to get really a lot of traction and movement in crypto. And when you start to have people utilizing it, and some of them may not even realize that they're use, utilizing cryptocurrency and blockchain, right? It's just, it's a seamless process that just incorporates into what they're doing. I compare it back to, I mean, think about before, you know, Windows was on computers. I mean, I know that was a long time ago, but, you know, these green screens you're looking at and had to put all these command prompts in and, you know, people oh, yeah. people, people weren't really ready to adopt that, but you put a Windows user interface on top of it and it made it easier. Those, those processes are still happening in the background. It's exactly. just, this is just uh, making it easier. So that's definitely something that I've been, yeah. you know, talking about and looking at and projects that I focus on are same thing, ones that, that center around around that. Yeah, and you know, I make this argument, or I, I ask this question a lot of the time, I say, and, and these are to very technically educated, savvy people um, within the financial space. I say, how does a credit card work? And they say, oh, bank A, bank B, da, 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 da. And I say, no, 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 technically, how does your credit card work? When that's swiped, what are the next 10 actions that that credit card processing terminal does next? What codes are they running? And the answer to, from every single person that I've asked that question is, man, I don't know. And you know, truth be told, even though I'm asking that question to a lot of people, I don't know that answer either. But I do know one thing, when I swipe my credit card, it works. And it works every time. And I have confidence in that. And merchants that I use have confidence in that. And my neighbor has confidence in that. And we collectively accept that that's what a credit card is. That's how a credit card works. And we don't actually have to ask those questions. And I think that when blockchain and cryptocurrencies can be successfully implemented into the back end, into a stack of technology that allow value creation in an end consumer's life easily, simplistically, like you said, Wayne, visually. Nobody needs to write solidity. We need applications that, that facilitate these transactions and processes and executing of smart contracts with the click of a button. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, something else you said uh, that, that I point out, you know, you said, you talked about um, projects that make sense, right? And, and my guess is you mean it, it, and it's probably the same thing I feel like, does it make sense? To, does it make sense to utilize cryptocurrency and or blockchain in that project? If it doesn't, if you're just doing it to say it's on a blockchain, then it's not really a good use case. But it's gotta it's gotta make sense. It's gotta solve a problem um, because I think that's what a lot of a lot of what we saw, in, especially in 2017, where these projects coming out just they were on the blockchain or they were launching their own cryptocurrency, and it didn't really solve a problem, fill a need, or anything. You know, it was just. It was just a buzzword at the time, so. Yeah, and you know, that's the truth. And really what a lot of people need to remember is blockchain 
is simply just a data handling protocol. That's all it is. It allows for the distributed creation, storage, and consensus of, of the validity of this information, but it's a, a, a technical tool that belongs in a stack of technology. It's not the end all be all. You don't just say, oh, I want a X, Y, and Z blockchain, and you have a company. What you need to do is you need to have an idea, a concept uh, that serves a purpose, that somebody would either pay money, trade value, whatever it might be, where somebody is gonna interact with it in some way, regardless of whether it's blockchain or not. And then in creating the product, in creating the technology, there, there's a hard look at that you have to take at every company of, okay, are we gonna be, storing all of our data on the blockchain with uh, with generally a higher cost to get started in the beginning, um, the requirement of building and maintaining the infrastructure of, of decentralized nodes, um, and at the end of the day, is it worth it? And you know, some cases, sure, it's absolutely worth it. Other cases, no. Some cases, it's a mixture of the two. Some cases, you can store very small parts of your business data within a blockchain, but you're using traditional means. You're using databases for everything else. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's some very interesting ways out there of kind of connecting the two and, and validating um, the data that you're, you're handling centrally through the blockchain and through a distributed ledger. Um, but you know that that's a completely other story so you know i think blockchain and more specifically cryptocurrencies is a great tool and has many many different applications to virtually every business but one of my my priming questions whenever i'm talking to a new brand is okay why how are you using the blockchain how are you using a cryptocurrency okay what's the purpose all right could this be achieved by traditional means? Could this be achieved with ACH payments, with, with digital transfers, with, with, with credit cards, with cash even? Could this be accomplished in the same fashion? If the answer is yes or kind of trails off a little bit, okay, you're using it just as a buzzword or you're trying to figure it out, which there's nothing wrong with that, but my advice would be to Figure that stuff out in the background. And when you have a great idea, when, when your company and your use of blockchain and cryptocurrencies serves a great purpose, be very public about it. But when you're figuring things out, don't just use that to get people excited. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. So uh, we kind of dove into that. Is there, are there any, um, any particular projects you want to talk about as far as anything that, that you can at this point? I know I mentioned um, you got some stuff. Nobody wants to let the cat out of the bag too early when you're working on something, but anything? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a sneak preview into things to come. So rather than building one specific piece of technology or one specific company, what I did was I, 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 I found myself in a unique situation maybe not i hope everybody's in this situation but it's very surprising to me to where i'm working with so many different companies so many different brands so many different ideas and projects and this that and the other that in order for me to just keep a, a grasp on everything that i have going i needed to create a large form of standardization of how these different companies operated and you know, this is my, my tried and true method of how I've always started companies. And you know, I've had a, a few larger national brands over the years. And it's really pretty easy when you, you really distill it down to the, the basics of what's required to operate a business, market a business, create a product, uh, get that product into your consumer's hands in the most efficient and seamlessly way, way possible. So what I did was I started building a framework. Um, what my framework does is it gives all the tools that a small or a big business needs to one, operate their business, two, manage their employees, um, 
independent contractors, team members, employees, or investors, partners, um, accountants, third party vendors, gives them all the tools to do that in a very easy fashion. Um, in addition to that, there's the connection to, the, to blockchain. There's the connection to artificial intelligent modules. There's the connection to all these different internally provided services and also very open third-party provided services, allowing for a centralized dashboard for you to operate one company or 10 different companies and really keep a stronghold of everything that's going on and gather insight that simply isn't possible unless you're putting everything into a standardized fashion in a well-defined uh, database and then able to um, apply some very cool algorithms that presents things that may not initially be apparent while anonymously sharing your data with all the other companies that are, are within this ecosystem, allowing the model to gain new insights on a larger data set of more unique conditions. And yeah, it just keeps going and going and going. So what I did was um, I created this technology and rather than going out and ICO in and going to conventions or even talking about it on podcasts or interviews, um, I built it out for my own companies. I built it out to serve a purpose and, and serve a problem that I was running into right now. And I've been building this out and testing this for about the last year now. And I can tell you, um, my life's gotten a whole lot easier. All of my partners and team members and people involved with my other uh, organizations, their lives have gotten even easier. And it's given us a chance to get everything pretty great before we put it out there into the, to the world. Nice, nice. All right, Jacob, I definitely want to thank you for joining us today. I know uh, you and I will be seeing each other later this week. You're going to be in New Orleans for the Cryptocurrent Conference. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I'm super excited about that. It's going to be a good time. Um, excited to be back in New Orleans again. Um, really excited to, to meet the people at the conference. Um, excited to get together with Richard again. Um, and yeah, just continue spreading the word of blockchain and having these conversations with people. Absolutely. Driving awareness, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Jacob, I want to thank you for joining us and I want to thank all the listeners for listening in and we will catch you on the next episode.